Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to the IRL Festival live cooking demo with Chef Brian McCourt. We're so excited to have you joining us. And it's another uh, first time doing this notch in the belt. So we're all a little familiar with that these days. So uh, I hope you're, hope you're forgiving. We're going to give this a shot. Right. Um, get your ingredients ready and uh, get hungry because this is going to be amazing. Um, you're welcome to put questions in the chat on Facebook or YouTube. And I will make sure that Chef Brian gets those questions and answers them for you. Before I introduce Brian, I would like to acknowledge that we come to you from the Haldeman Tract, land that was promised to the Haudenosaunee of the Six Nations of the Grand River and is within the territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. Let us remember to be good neighbors and community with the first peoples of Turtle Island and to be good stewards of this land. So without further ado, let me introduce our extraordinary chef, Brian McCourt. Oh, extraordinary, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you are extraordinary. So you might know him from um, our amazing dinners that we have at the Rich Uncle Tavern. His culinary style draws inspiration from his Irish heritage and Canadian training and his embracing of the culinary arts. So Brian was born and raised in Dublin, where food was a big part of his family, bringing everyone together. He then left Ireland to become a culinary adventurer. Brian started his culinary career in Kitchener at the Strand Bistro moved on to the Char Charcoal Steakhouse, Sheraton Hotels, Rebel Creek Golf Course, and Salute Uptown Waterloo. And then from 20, uh, 2007 to 2017, he was the executive chef at both Wildcraft and Bower Kitchen. While working for the Charcoal Group, he had the opportunity to run one of Canada's top private golf clubs, Ovenbird, in Muskoka. And he did stages in his native Dublin at the Greenhouse and the Chop House. So he is currently the culinary uh, director of Ignite Restaurant Group in Kitchener, which owns Rich Uncle Tavern, Graffiti Market, and Crowsfoot Smokehouse in Comstogo. And we highly recommend trying them all because they're delicious. Um, he's also won many culinary awards and is a big supporter of local food, farmers, markets, and our We Festival. So thank you for joining us. I am going to be quiet now and let Chef Brian take it away. Okay, well, welcome everybody. Welcome to my home. And uh, yeah, let's kick this off. Um, just so you know, there might be a couple F bombs that might drop. <laughs> just want to get that out of the way right away, but I'll try my hardest not to uh, drop anything like that. So yeah, pour, pour yourself a drink and uh, let's have a little toast. Um, may you live as long as you want and never want as long as you live. So, Slancha, welcome to my home, and uh, let's get this started. So, we're going to do a little um, a little soda bread, uh, a little smoked fish chowder. So, I've got some um, amazing fish that I picked up from Coddles uh, this morning. So, first things first is we're going to go over to the stove, and we're going to start with our smoked haddock that I got here. Usually, I would use mackerel, but my wife is not a big fan of mackerel. She thinks it's way too fishy. So since she's be, she'll be eating it, we're going to use the haddock. So, hey, Brian, can, yeah. can people use smoked salmon or is that? Smoked salmon can be used. Of course it can. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Any kind of smoked fish will work in this. Uh, with cooking, there's no boundaries. Like it's mm. an open um, canvas, right? Like I give recipes, but recipes are there just as guidelines and you get creative. So you can use anything. Smoke mackerel. Smoke salmon, smoke haddock, smoke no oyster, whatever you want to do. Okay. okay. No canned tuna, though. No canned tuna. <laughs> no, that's just for sandwiches at funerals. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, sorry about that one. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to go over the stove. So I've got a little bit of EB Manor milk. This is a 4.8% milk. Jim and his family in Conestoga make this amazing milk. The chocolate milk is next level if you like chocolate milk. So yeah, we're gonna move on over to the stove. So we're gonna just put the milk in our little pot here, the full liter. And then with that, we're just going to drop our fish in to infuse it. We're gonna turn it on to about a medium, 
medium heat and let that simmer for about about five minutes or so, just till it becomes a little flaky and a little tender. Uh, just wash my hands there. Always wash your hands as you go. No cross contamination. What about preheating the oven? Oh yeah, preheat your oven. If you haven't preheated your oven yet, get that oven at 400. So with that, I am gonna take some potatoes and I'm going to peel them. And then we're gonna add this into the base over there. So with this base, so basically my good friend, um, David Hutchison, my neighbor across the street, clan gathering of restaurants. So they have Scran and Dram, Imperial Market and Malt and Barley. So his granny used to make this soup called Colin and Skink. So I've basically taken a little bit of what I do and what he does and mended it and meshed it together to make something really delicious. So usually if I was making a smoked fish chowder, I would not do this method of smoking, of soaking it or infusing the milk. I would just go strictly flake it in there and build the soup. But I find that this, your end result is outstanding. Mm -hmm. so, so with that, we've got our potatoes. I'm going to add the potatoes into uh, the milk and fish over there just so it can thicken up a little bit. We're not using any sort of... Um, flour or roux or cornstarch to thicken it. It's just going to be naturally thickened with uh, with the potatoes. So from there. So did your mom make you peel the spuds when you were a kid? I mean, mom always made me peel the spuds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And, and the grannies too, right? That was always the job of, mm. of us young kids was being in the kitchen, helping her, you know, cut the cabbage, Get the, get, the, get the potatoes ready, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So cutting these potatoes, you don't want to, it doesn't have to be uniform cut by any means. Uh, it's just in there to disintegrate and thicken. So I've got about, yeah, just two potatoes. I think that's all I'm going to need. And then that's just going to go in there. So I'll put the lid on. <coughs> And then let that sit for about five minutes or so. So in the meantime, we're going to get a soda bread ready to go. So I've got, got my little scale here. So the thing about soda bread is, uh, yeah, there's great history behind soda bread. Soda bread, you can find it. It got us through some dark times back in Ireland. It got us through the famine. It got us through a lot of, a lot of things. So... Over the years, it's developed into, um, you know, people put raisins in it, people put egg in it, people don't put egg. You can use, you put um, whole, whole wheat flour, you can use all-purpose flour. So I'm just using all-purpose flour here. So I'm going to weigh out my ingredients. Um, tear. So I'm using just Bob's Red Mill flour. I really like this flour. It's got great gluten and protein within the flour. So I'm just going to weigh out 510 grams of flour. So yeah, soda bread, back to that. Sorry, I got, I got sidetracked there. <laughs> um, so in the north of Ireland and the south of Ireland, two different methods of making soda bread. Um, in the north, they would make their dough and then shape it into little triangles and then cook it on a flat griddle. And that's their style of soda bread. But in the south, it's a loaf uh, formed into a loaf. And then there's a the little cross on the top. So the cross, it was a superstitious thing back in, the, back in the old times where they thought the cross would keep away any evil spirits that were trying to get into the house. And it would release fairies to fight off those evil spirits. So that's why there's a cross on the top. Huh. It's actually stolen from the Native Americans. The Native Americans used to... Uh, used to make soda bread, but they used to use a thing called pearl ash. So they didn't have any baking soda back in the day. So with the pearl ash was a natural levain that would raise the bread. Hmm. So somehow it went from North America over to Ireland and then the Irish adapted it. So oh, interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. So I got my flour. We're gonna move on to our baking soda. How do I open this bleeding thing? <laughs> There's no push thing on the side, is it? 
Yeah. Oh, there it is. There we go. There. Okay, here we go. So with that, I'm going to add one teaspoon of soda into our flour mixture. And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of kosher salt. Oh, no, sorry, two teaspoons of kosher salt. Yeah, that could have been a salty mess there, right? <laughs> and then I'm going to add one tablespoon of fine sugar. So that goes in there. We're going to take our trusty little whisk. We're going to incorporate all those ingredients together. So then I'm going to add that into my big bowl here. I'm going to grab some buttermilk and some eggs from the fridge. So I put I put egg in mine because I find that the baking soda and the buttermilk and the egg really gives it a nice airy texture and less dense than you would get with no egg in it. So I know some people are probably mm. outraged right now that I'm putting egg in it, but you know what? <laughs> Hold my own. <laughs> There's okay. a, the ones I've had have been very crumbly. Is that because there is no egg sometimes? Well, we'll find out, right? Hopefully this works today. <laughs> but usually, yeah, less crumbly, easier to, uh, to slice and a nice mm. texture to it. So I'm just going to whip up my egg. I'm using uh, Conestogo eggs. They've got, they're super rich. They have the beautiful, beautiful um, dark orange yolk. So with that, uh, one and three quarter cup of buttermilk. So they used to, the whole thing with buttermilk was, it used to be sour milk. So you used to use anything that was spoiled would go into the soda bread for the next day. Then buttermilk came along, and then it's just a lot easier to use buttermilk rather than hmm. rather than sour milk. Yeah. Okay. So I've got my wet ingredients. I've got my dry ingredients. I need to get a little bit of butter. So foreign low butter. If you've never had this butter, this butter is outstanding. Grass fed. It is unreal butter. So I'm looking at two tablespoons of melted butter. So I'm going to go back over to the stove, grab a little pot. And we're going to heat up two tablespoons of butter. You can never have too much butter though, right? Right. You, you know what? When I was younger, I hated butter. I couldn't stand it. Like, And it was because of... Going to school back in Dublin, like you get fed your 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 lunches, so you would get like your you get a sandwich every every day, mm -hmm. you'd get a ham sandwich, or it would be a uh, what happened to the second camera there? Do you know? Uh, did it time out? Oh, sorry. Try again. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Yeah, just give me one second here, guys. Jen, can you help me out here? Can you? Well, it won't affect the taste of it anyways if we can't see it, so. I need to find the link that Sue had sent. Okay, anyways, so yeah, back to the butter story. Like, you used to get these sandwiches, and it'd be like one thin little slice of ham, and then probably like an inch of butter <laughs> on bread, and it was disgusting. You'd be like, so I was terrified of butter. Up until probably, not terrified, like. Yeah. Up until about, yeah, about 10 years ago, I started having a lot of it, because of being a chef, like, you appreciate butter, because mm -hmm. you baste in it, you bathe in it, <laughs> you eat it late night just for shits and giggles. Yeah. Um, anyways, so yeah, butter. So anyways, I got my melted bar. The bar is going into the buttermilk and uh, egg mixture. There we go. Oh. oh, that's a 
that's a good thing that the camera wasn't on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm boiling over here. <laughs> Down. Okay, so back to this. So now we're going to mix our wet ingredients with our dry ingredients. And then we're just going to use a little trusty spatula to bring it all together. Nice. Okay. So you don't really want to knead this a lot. You just kind of want to get it so it's all incorporated together. I wish you could see that. Yeah, there we go. Oh, some, some on the counter. Yeah, totally. Bear with us here. It's the first time I've ever done anything like this. And the same with, uh, yeah. the same with Sue here with this uh, this whole COVID thing that's going on. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to take a little bit more flour. I'm just going to flour my work surface here. And... I'm going to drop this out into it. It's really pretty quick, eh? It's super quick, yeah. Like there's no there's no proofing involved or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's just the bread just comes together. So yeah. it's who has time for proofing. Pardon? Who has time for proofing? Well, actually, I have lots of time for proofing. I got, I got, These days. I, like, I got, I love, like, right in the fridge right now, we've got uh, dough I've been working on. I think I started it on Thursday, so for pizza. So, yeah, we made, like, a sourdough starter, uh, mm. cold ferments for 72 hours in the fridge. Wow. So, yeah, that's it. We got our little dough, so not overly kneaded. It's just looking good. So then we're going to get ourselves a cast iron pan. And with the cast iron pan, um, I've already, uh, hold on, so let me wash my hands here. Anybody got any questions so far or anything? Any questions coming in, Sue? Uh, just the one about the salmon so oh, far. Okay. All right. So I think people are concentrating. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, let me know if I'm going too fast. If anybody's cooking at home, because I can, I can try and slow it down. Keyword is try there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So again, I'm going to use some butter. I'm going to take this cast iron pan, and I'm going to lather, slather it up, and then I'm going to drop our bread in here. So we need to do the cross on the top. Just because for the fairies. Well, oh, there we go. Camera's back up in action. Jen, very good. Thank you. You are so you're so good to me. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. And Jen, also there was a, a compliment for the cute sous chef there. Just Carrie Carrie Deckard is a fan of the sous chef. Oh! Carrie Decker. Oh, that's, that's nice hey, for Carrie. my man. That's so funny. Hello, oh. oh, Carrie. Cheers. <laughs> okay. So, soda bread, boom, in the cast iron pan. I'm going to fire it in the oven, 400 degrees. We're looking at about 40 minutes, 35 to 40 minutes. Uh, I'll check it at about 30, see where we're at, go back another five minutes, and then we'll let you know when it's ready, and we'll do a little trick. A uh, tip on how you know it's ready. Nice. All right. So uh, Google set timer for 30 minutes. Actually, Google doesn't recognize my voice because of my accent. So, <laughs> so Jenny's got to do it. Google set timer for 30 minutes. <laughs> there we go. I mean, Hachi no, might be able to attest to this, but apparently Scottish people have a hard time with Siri doesn't understand them. And yeah, Alexa hates them apparently. <laughs> Wasn't there a commercial or something done when they're in an elevator? Yeah, yeah. 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 The Scottish people aren't bad people, you know? They're pretty good people, you know? But me? Okay. So soda bread's done. It's in the oven. Um, again, wash my hands. I just washed my hands. Everything's good. So then we're going to get on to the actual making of the chowder. 
So, we'll start with bacon. One of my favorite things, pork belly, <laughs> bacon, like pigs. Mm, so good. So this is a double swamp bacon that we make at Crow's Foot. So it's mm. brined for, it's a dry brine for about a week. And then it's air dried for 24 hours. And then after that, it's smoked uh, for about three and a half to four hours. Wow. So it's absolutely delicious. Okay. So with the bacon, we're just going to do little, little chunks so you're looking at about yay. You see that? Yeah. Mm. Okay. So with this, we're going to move back over to the stove. We're going to render all this fat out. We're also going to keep some of the fat in there to saute our vegetables in. Um, back over to the stove. Fish is looking pretty good. So I'm just going to move this to the back burner. So you can see my mess now. Oh, camera's <laughs> off again. It's overheating. Oh, it's overheating. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Can, we, <laughs> can we do something else then? I could take it off and when you're going over there, I can fold it over the pot. Okay. Good job, Susan. Thank you. Like I said, we're all figuring figuring this out as we go along here. Yeah, I think my phone is just being over the stove. It's getting a little bit overheated mm. here. Right. Yeah, you can get a three percent discount off your ticket uh, price because of, uh, <laughs> yeah. because of technical difficulties. <laughs> okay, so I want the pot on a medium medium heat. I don't want it too high because I want to render out that fat. And I want it just to do its thing, low and slow, to crisp up that bacon. So pot's on. I wish I could show you, but I can't. So we're just going to move over here and, yeah, get, get our bacon on the go. It's like old school now. That's it. <laughs> Okay, again, wash your hands. No cross contamination across the nation. <laughs> okay. I'm sure it smells great over there. Uh, yeah, yeah, it does. It smells like bacon. And who doesn't love bacon? Right? Right. Okay, so it's gonna grab a new cutting board and wash my knife quickly. Okay, so now we're on to veg prep. So we got some celery. So we just need about three of these stalks of celery. Uh, make sure you wash your celery. Make sure you wash all your vegetables when you get your vegetables because they're all dirty within. Um, You know, like I, I remember when when COVID kicked off there last Paddy's Day that we go do some groceries and Jen would make me sanitize the vegetables once we brought them in. Yeah, like everything like canned canned items, everything. Yeah, right. Because you were so worried, you no one no one really knew. What, oh, yeah, what yeah. was going down? Yeah, yeah, that was very popular back then at the. Beginning of the pandemic. Oh, we've learned a lot since then, haven't we? We sure have. Okay, so we just want to give uh, a nice dice cut to our celery. Not too big, not too small, because you want, once the soup or the chowder cooks, you want to still have texture in there. So we're looking at little itty bitty pieces here. So I will just go through this. I wonder if any of my family from back home is on here. Like, if you are, send a little shout out. Yeah, want to hear from people, so feel free to jump in anytime. So, yeah, we've been part of, this is your fifth year, Sue, right? Is this it's our, Well, it's our technically our sixth year. I'm not sure we're going to count much of last year. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I've been part of this uh, every, I think we missed one year of a dinner, right? 
I think that was the first year I was at Berlin. Right? Brilliant. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Actually, I think you've been in every one, Brian. We've done every one. Okay, we've done every one. We did two. I mean, it's all been a blur of fun and food. So, I mean, geez. We did three at Bauer, right? Mm. And then we did two at Rich Uncle. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The dinner last year was phenomenal. Shout yeah. out to Hachi back there. Um, Shout out to Hutch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the food and the dancing and oh, it was just so lovely. It was it was so great. Like it was one of my favorite cooking events I've ever done. Because I was cooking yeah. with my best mate in a great for a great cause for mm -hmm. for uh and then in a great space, like the Rich Uncle, absolutely beautiful restaurant. Yeah. But, that's yeah, it. I think we'll just have to make it extra big and awesome next year. Of course we will. <laughs> okay. So chopping our vegetables away here. Uh, bacon's doing its thing over on the stove. Let me just go check on that. You got to join in. Can you join in? Is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not on there. Yeah. Let me see for a second. Is everybody keeping up at home? Let us know if you uh, need something um, repeated or slowed down. So you want to add, like, it just says I'm backstage. Can you add this other camera in? There we go. Oh, there you are. There we go. Perfect. So, yeah, as you can see, we got our bacon on the go. We've got some overflowing um, milk infused uh, with small paddock. Perfect. <laughs> I'm going to turn it up a little bit just so I can start rendering that down a little faster. So Brian, a couple of a couple of comments have come in. Um, Sue Letson is on. She's keeping oh. an eye on you, apparently. <laughs> I like Sue. Sue's my mother-in-law. Yeah, she, she is a lovely woman. Yeah, and there's somebody, um, not quite sure about the handle here, but it says, loving the Dublin Canadian accent, Brian. Good vibes. Hoping Gary can learn a few tricks in the kitchen to bring home to the family in Dublin. Elbow bump. It said who? Hoping that Gary can? Gary, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Is it somebody named Carl, maybe? Carl? Oh, like Gary's brother? Gary's brother Carl. That'd be oh. weird. Oh, cool. Amazing. Mm -hmm. like, uh, Florin Gary, we call him, or Irish Gary. Yeah. Irish Gary. <laughs> if you need any flooring done, make sure you contact me, and then I can put you in touch with Irish Gary. Irish Gary. Very good on his knees. <laughs> Morning. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, we all got to stick together in this whole pandemic thing, you know. Like, get out there, support your local restaurants, mm -hmm. you know, and your flooring companies. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. It's and your festivals. Cool. And festivals, exactly. Mm -hmm. And festivals. Yeah. Oh, look at my wife over there stirring my bacon for me. So sorry, I moved on to the onion. I never even. Uh, I never even said that. So onion, yeah, I peeled it, and now we're dicing it. So again, the same same size as as the celery. Here, Brian, I have another question. So uh, it says, I didn't get the initial work on the stove. Milk heated up and portions of fish just put in, and then the potatoes? Put in, yeah. So you heat up the milk first and then put the fish in. No, I and put then the milk and the fish in at the same time, bring it up to a uh, like a uh, light simmer and let it sit in there for about five to ten minutes just to infuse um, the milk. I also mm -hmm. added about two potatoes in there to thicken it a little bit. So yeah, you want to go back to the stove now. I'm gonna check on the bacon. Perfect. So this is looking good. We have her fish over here that is oh, it's looking perfect. Yeah, can you guys see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that looks great. Okay. Just message saying it's a 
Okay, so I've got my celery. We have our onions. And next we're gonna move on to our leeks. We're just gonna let that fish sit in there, infuse that milk a little bit more while we render out the fat from the bacon there. So these leeks, like absolutely, like look how crazy. Mm. Like look how, like usually leeks only have like a little tiny bit of white on them. Found these ones. Oh, leeks are great. So these beautiful leeks. Yeah. Anyways, so leeks again, split it down the middle and give it a rinse in your sink to remove any dirt that's going to be in the middle of your leek. Hmm. There's a lot of leeks in Irish cooking, right? Like I've seen it in a few different recipes. So yeah, actually I was talking to my wife, Jen, last night. You know, like there's mirepoix, which goes into a lot of carrots, onion, celery. And mm -hmm. then um, Louisiana would have their trinity. So it's the celery, onions, green peppers. I think I'm going to label this the Irish trinity because it's got celery, onions, and leeks. Because leeks mm. are going to a ton of cooking back home, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it might be a thing, it might not be a thing. If it's not a thing, I just made it a thing. <laughs> it's now a thing. Okay. So with the leeks, I just want to take them. I cut them in half already. I just want to make another cut down the middle. So you have like little half cylinder, uh, quarter cylinders. And then give a nice little chop on it. So how long more we you got till what for the IRL festival runs all the way through till next week the end of next week? No, it runs through to seventeenth. Oh, it's the seventeenth. So, yeah, you know by the seventeenth we're pretty knackered. So right. <laughs> we started on the sixth. We've had Irish classes and Aaron cables knitting classes and films and stuff. Um, we have a great comedians coming up on Tuesday to get you in the good spirits for St. Patrick's Day. Awesome. Um, a Dubliner named Fiona O'Brien, now great. living in Canada, and a, and a Glaswegian named John Mostyn. Hilarious. Yeah. They have a great podcast, too. Right. Um, What's the name of the pro podcast again? Cracking, cracking, cracking Up. Cracking Up, yeah. C-R-A-I-C, yeah. Oh, they're very good. And then we have um, well, we have the virtual Kaylee tonight. And then... Uh, Gosh, we have a full day of music on St. Patrick's Day. Awesome. Yeah, it's going to be Amazing. so fun. I think it's absolutely outstanding what you've done for Irish culture in this region here, Sue. You know, you've really, you've really shined the light on what we're about for history, poetry, music, food, culture. Mm. It's amazing. It's not just about going on the piss and feeling like shite for two days after, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I was always kind of sad that that's what people thought Irish culture was, you know. Right. Well, especially in our region here with the Ezra Street, right? Like, right. And I countries. do not begrudge anybody a few pints because I have been, I have known to have a few jars myself. However, oh, cool. so much more to it, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And you know what? The enthusiasm of our community to embrace and try out like all these weird Irish things has been yeah. awesome. Okay, not weird, but, <laughs> you know, weird if you're not Irish, maybe. Okay, so we've got our onions, we've got our celery, we've got our leeks. Now we're going to peel some spuds while the bacon is still rendering down there. So looking at about, I don't know, maybe about six or seven spuds that we can uh, peel and then dice up to put into our chowder once we start building our foundation of the chowder. Oh, you know what, actually, in the meantime, Jen, you wanna grab that camera again? Is it, is it on there? No.
So Brian, Steve is a big fan of your um, your Irish Trinity there. Who is? Steve Tesca. Oh, like, he is? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should uh, follow Steve, too. He's got a YouTube channel called The Sessions. He does oh. um, live chats with people that are in the industry if it's uh if it's liquor if it's sports like it's just a good conversation podcast that he's got going on so nice. um, yeah steve type it in there so you can share so you can get some more likes on your youtube channel there buddy yeah um is that on now no, oh sue can you add that camera again yep here we go perfect Oh, all right, so our bacon is all rendered down, coming along nicely. So with that, I'm just going to just drain off some of this fat. I like keeping pork fat around for <laughs> For lots of things, I'd rather use pork fat than olive oil or anything else. So it comes free with bacon. You don't have to pay for it. So I think it's brilliant. <laughs> um, okay, so bacon's looking good. We're going to get a trusty paper towel. We're going to get a plate. And we're going to place our bacon on to our paper towel. No idea. Oh, Brian, I have a question. Go ahead. Were you this adventurous as a foodie when you were younger, or is this a later on in life? No, no I think uh, I got into cooking because my mom was a horrible cook. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm totally joking. I'm totally joking. No, I just, it's just something I've always been passionate about, you know? Like, it's mm. food brings people together. I love entertaining. I love cooking for people. I love the banter of like you know sitting around the kitchen, eating, cooking. So yeah, yeah. Just, for me it's it's family. And if I can turn it into a career, and that's what I did, so um, I just fucking rolled with it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. So I've just added the salary, the Trinity. Oh wait, which way is this? Way? What? Bros. So I've just added the onions, the celery, and the leeks into the pot. I'm going to add a little bit more bacon fat because it is sticking a wee bit. It's on data. Mm. Okay. A little bit more bacon fat. So back to these potatoes here. Actually, I'm gonna put one of you guys to work here. Here, here. Peel some potatoes for me. <laughs> okay. Here's another question. So, my family in Donegal and Dublin have varying ideas of what the best potato is in Ireland. Um, do you have a favorite? Roadside. Like if you were like, no, I swear to God, like some of the best potatoes I've had in Ireland has just been from some guy on the side of the road selling oh, yeah. the spuds. Right. I don't even know what kind of make they are. They're just, mm. they're just pulled from his fucking from his field, right? Like yeah, yeah. But we always had pink curds were the ones we always pink had. Pink curds, yeah. They're yeah. they're they're a good spud. Yeah. But over here, like I like Yukons. Mm. Uh, I like the Yukon Gold for mashed potatoes. I like them for. Um, chowders and stuff like that. Um, russets I do like for chips. Ah, okay. And, uh, yeah. Okay, what's next? Okay, so I'm going to take the fish that's infused over here. I'm going to bring it over to the cutting board. So I have our little trusty stock here. I'm going to pull out. Uh, where's my fish? Uh, it 
So I'm just going to remove the fish. I'm going to place it into a little um, bowl here. So remember, we have our potatoes in here. We've got our cream in here. And we've got our smoked haddock in this cream here. So with this, I'm going to strain it. So I'll grab a colander. So I have this fine mesh little strainer here. Uh, I'm going to take that and I want to just strain it into the bowl. Potatoes are nice and soft. So I'll get rid of this. Mm. And then I just want to use a ladle, the back of a ladle, and I just want to mash up the potatoes into, into the milk. So it acts as a little thickener. So this is going to be the base of our chowder. And you can see. Got these fluffy potatoes that are going to thicken our base. You know what? Okay, so back to the stove. Look at that, all your potatoes are done too. That would have taken me a lot. <laughs> Okay, so we have our cream, our milk mixture, our potatoes are all peeled. We've got our fish here that is fully cooked. We have some mussels here that we're going to steam off quickly. So I'm going to take another pot. With this, I'm just going to add the mussels in. No need to get it hot. All we're doing is we're just trying to cook the mussels and then we're going to pull them out. I hate having chowders that have uh, shells in them. I want to be able to eat it. It just looks gnarly when you're in a restaurant mm -hmm. and you're, you're sucking on shells and it just, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So, Brian, aren't you obligated to sing Molly Malone? Will you play with mussels? Yeah, though? go on. I'm not going to sing it. Come on, on, on. <laughs> uh, where's that? Bottle of white wine, Jim. Um, oh, never mind. So, we got some white wine. Just add it in there. I don't know. That looks like enough. <laughs> I got some chicken stock. So, again, the whole purpose of this is we're building depth and flavor. So, we're trying to extract the liqueur from the middle of the muscle to infuse the wine and the chicken stock. That's going to go into the infused milk with the smoked haddock and the potatoes. Then it's going to go back into the big pot. So multiple steps making multiple layers in order to create a chowder that's full in depth mm. and uh, delicious. Wow. Okay. I don't know. I could watch people cook all day. It's very relaxing. <laughs> it is. It seriously is very, very relaxing. I absolutely... I turned it into a career and I love it. Like, <laughs> I just love, I love cooking. Mm. So again, back to potatoes. We're going to do the second round of potatoes now. So same kind of dice, but we want to keep them all uniformed in a way. So we want to have little, little tiny bite-sized pieces. That's going to, it's not going to take too long. The, the bigger the chunks are, Obviously, the longer it's going to take to cook, right? Mm -hmm. So, does anybody want to sing Molly Malone? Any any one of yous? No, no, you're good. Liam's really good at it. Yeah. Well, Sue here says that Jen can sing it. So, <laughs> go on, Sue. Mad up. Uh, yeah, Jen has a beautiful voice. She is outstanding. But it's very, very hard to get Jen to sing. And then when you do get her to sing, after a few drinks, she can't sing. 
So it's <laughs> that fine line in between you've got to find with Jan, which is things, you know? Where's Aoife, Sue? Well, she's still here, okay. stuck in the, you know, with the pandemic and all. She's been here since last St. Patrick's Day, so yeah. <laughs> that's been fun. Um, but yeah, she can, she can belt that out, no doubt. She could. Was she part of the the cowgirl choir? No, was she I in was, the? She was in the arts. Right, but it, like her and Megan were all tight, no? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I don't. Uh, Eva would know Megan, but you know, just sort of, she's been in London for a while now. So, okay, never mind. <laughs> I'll just shut up and get back to talking. <laughs> I'll just focus on my time. Yeah. Brian has a lovely voice as well, though. Oh, Brian, do you have your what's your party song? Um, the Rare Old Times. Oh, Luke Kelly. Love yeah. Brian. Ring a ring a rosy, right? That's why that. that one and Raglan Raglan Road. I oh, love nice. Absolutely love that tune. Mine was Black Velvet Band as a kid. I, I, I used to love that song. And then I started going to Falcher down in Kitchener. I mean, mm. they're uptown Waterloo. And any band that played there would play that song. And it just it just got it was just played out for me, you know? Yeah, that's fair. That's it fair. That, it was that Canadian, it was that Irish song that all the Canadians knew, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll say it's, it's a lot it. better than when Irish eyes are smiling. I'm going to put right. that out there. <laughs> okay, so almost done my potatoes here. Jen's over there stirring everything up for me, which is great. I do have another phone that... Maybe not overheat. Okay. So our tatties, or our spuds, or whatever you want to call them, tatties, I've adapted that from you, haven't I? This is, that's a Scottish thing, right? <laughs> so potatoes in. we got our mussels on the go. Um, our bacon's already cooked. Um, might as well add more wine. <laughs> Maybe in here. No, in here. You could add the other camera. So Jen's got another camera set up if you want to try and add that one there, Sue. Oh, great. Okay, so I put chicken, I put about a liter of chicken stock into the chowder. Um, I've got two cans of canned clams. You can use, um, what do you call it? Not canned clams, fresh clams. Sorry. <laughs> had, a had a moment there. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. I told Sue, I had about 15 pints this morning watching football. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, Right, so we got chicken stock in there, we got our, our Trinity in there, we have the potatoes in there now. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna add the liquid from the canned clams into our base. But you're straining it. We're not straining this. Oh, you're straining it. Yeah, I said I'm gonna put the liquid in. Sorry, there's a strainer on top of the pot. So we're just putting the liquid in, like I said before, just the liquid, not the actual clams, because then they'll overcook once mm -hmm. they're in. Okay. So the, the order that you do these things are pretty, it's pretty specific. So it's, it's pretty specific because you don't want to, when you eat your chowder, you want everything to be delectable, mm -hmm. delicate, and you don't want rubbery clams or rubbery mussels or overcooked fish. So, right. um, yeah. Okay. Back over we go. No, do we? Okay, we'll get back to, back to our cutting board here. So, we have our fish, which is our paddock. Oh, it's the Google timer. Hey, Google, <laughs> stop. He actually listens to me when I say stop. That's the only time he listens to me. <laughs> or she, or whatever. Um, okay, change. Come on. Come here. So, I'm just checking on our soda bread here. Woo! Woo! It's looking, it's looking oh. pretty good, but I'm, I think another, another 10 minutes at least. So... Hey Google, Jen, can, hey, Google. You, can you do that thing again? <laughs> hey Google, set timer for 10 minutes. 
<laughs> well, I don't know how we ever timed things before Google, right? I think it was a clock and you watch the clock. I think that's- I've heard of those. Yeah. yeah. So back to our uh, haddock here. So we just want to pull little pieces apart and get ready to, and just make sure there's no little pin bones in it because that is very unpleasant when you're, you're eating something and you get it lodged in your throat. So you go to Coddles, yeah, for your seafood? Go to Coddles or go to T&J, both, both yeah. great places. Um, mm. T&J is really close to us at Graffiti. Um, Brandon and the crew over there are outstanding. But uh, Ron Coddle, a.k.a. the Codfather, he's got <laughs> a, a, great, a great variety of fish, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got multiple locations, Coddles, right? Like they've got the one in Vincenzo's. They've got the one out by the old Bud Automotive there. And then they're out in the market also, right? Right, right. Right. So fish is all pulled. So we're just going to set that off to the side again. I'm going to wash my hands. <laughs> Hand washing is very popular these days. So you're very on brand there. It's Brian. Very, very popular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so the bread is almost done. Um, we've got our chowder on the go. So I'm just gonna take the clams that I have um, strained in, and I'm gonna add this just to the mixture of haddock I have back behind me here. Um, okay, trusty bay leaf. Take one, try to find a, a fair size one. We're gonna pop that into the chowder. Don't eat these things, you can't digest them. Okay. Okay. So far, so good, Sue, or what? Like so far, great. Am I? Am I like like bombing this thing? Like <laughs> you're doing fantastic. You're this just is like like we said. Like this is something I've never done, especially live. Like we thought we had it with the third camera, mm -hmm. but obviously we don't. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. And, well, I think the audience is very forgiving. They're just enjoying it. So. Okay, good. Um, I'm actually getting really I've long had no road. complaints, but I have had a request to okay. hear Raglan Road. To hear Raglan Road? To have me sing it? <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> no. Maybe after a few more drinks. Like, if you want to tune back in at 8 o'clock tonight, I'll definitely <laughs> yeah. sing it. We can play it in the background. Okay. So our mussels have just come off. They're all open. That's how you know a mussel is cooked. If it's open, if it's closed, do not eat it. Get rid of it right away. Mm. Actually, one of my sous chefs is actually, I was at Crow's Foot this morning picking up some stuff. And he's like, oh, I had some mussels last night. And he says the first time he's after, actually gotten sick from eating, um, from, ah. eating, from eating anything. And he said it was within 20 minutes. He ate a mussel. And he's like, oh, that, that's not right. Spit it out. And then with 20 minutes later, he was violently ill. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Shout yeah. out to Manly. Huh? <laughs> we didn't eat the mussels at the restaurant. <laughs> we did not have the mussels at the no, restaurant. No, it was him cooking at home. There's nothing to do with the restaurant. This is him cooking at home. We left that part out, didn't we? Yeah, <laughs> you did. <laughs> Thank goodness for your sous chef. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Chef Jen. Okay, so we have our mussels. All we're gonna do is we're gonna take that trusty little strainer that I strained the clams into the broth with, and we're just gonna add the broth that we steam this in. We wanna make sure it's a fine mesh strainer because we wanna get rid of all that sand or mm. any kind of in, uh, impurities that came out of the mussels. We wanna catch that so it doesn't end up in your chowder, right? Mm. Okay, so we got our base gone, we got our muscles gone, we got our bacon that's cooked, we have our soda bread in the oven. We got about five more minutes on that soda bread. Um, I'm gonna put these guys to work over here. Um, where's the little cork thing? Oh, here we go. So what they're gonna do in the background is they're just going to 
take these muscles and just remove the little muscle. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you don't want to be eating shells in a fancy restaurant, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, no, I'll bring it all. Okay. Let me go off camera for a second. Yeah. <laughs> I think you have a lot of uh, sous chefs there, right? Eh? It's our, it's it's um, it's it's David and Sabrina from the clan uh, group of rest the clan mm -hmm. gathering of restaurants. Nice. Their neighbors across the street, best friends, our own bubble. Like they actually moved in last <laughs> Paddy's day. The pandemic hit and they haven't left yet. So oh, it sounds perfect. <laughs> so we're all we're all in the same little bubble here. You know? yeah. did, you get, did you get a little bowl there? Yeah. Perfect. And we're all washing our hands. Okay, these guys are washing their hands. They're on track. Okay, so what I have here is the infused milk that we did earlier with the potatoes in it and everything, right? So with this mixture, we're just going to go straight into the pot that I have on the stove that I wish you could see. Mm. But I'll bring it over. Once I add it, I'll flip it, and hopefully you can see what it looks like inside, okay? Awesome. So we have a base here, which has got lots of, it's got the celery, the trinity. Let me see if I can pull this up here. Yeah. So oh it's got our clam juice. It's got our muscle liqueur. It has the infused milk with the smoked haddock. It has chicken stock. It's got the fucking spuds in there. Oh, again, I just swore. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and then it has the onion, celery, and carrots. So wow. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this back on the stove so those potatoes can cook down a little bit. Okay. Looks amazing. So now we'll move on to our shrimp. So I've got these little, I think these are 2630s, uh, little Pacific shrimps. Obviously not local. Can't, well, actually, there actually is an Ontario farm. There is Ontario farm shrimp. They're called planet oh. shrimp. Yeah, they're just outside of Collingwood, I do believe. They're wow. outstanding, but super expensive. Very, mm. very expensive. Anyways, back to these shrimp. All I want to do is I want to take it and I want to cut it into three. I want to have bite-sized pieces. I want every single bite to be kind of the same size, right? You don't mm. want one thing bigger than the other. Right, Thank right. Thank you very much, Mr. Hutch. So we got our mussels. They're all cleaned up. Nice. Let's put these off to the side. And now we're going to cut a shrimp into threes. I could have used a little tiny um, baby shrimp, but they're already cooked. So I like these because it will add another depth of flavor to our to our chowder. You know, I have this funny story about, um, it, well, it wasn't a chowder, it was a bisque. But we were in Donegal, John, uh, it was a couple days before Christmas, and uh Donna headed to the pub to meet up with some people. He comes home with a bag of crab toes. From the pub. Toes? Crab toes. Fresh oh, crab toes. Crab toes. I was like, what? <laughs> crab toes? <laughs> fresh oh. crab toes. And made the best crab bisque I've ever had in my life. Oh, wow. Fresh. I'm like, who goes to the pub and comes back with crab legs? <laughs> uh, someone from Donegal. <laughs> right? <laughs> that was great. Wow. Donegal is, is our favorite. Like we, mm. we got engaged on a sleep league. Oh um, yeah. We love our Jara. We love going to Nancy's little seafood restaurant there in the heart of our Jara. Um, it's just, it's just, it's breathtaking. You know? mm. It's a stunning, yeah. Stunning coastline. Oh, it's just so great. So we did one of our last trips is we did the whole West coast, What's that? The Wild Atlantic Way? Is that what's called, right? Where you go dingle all the way down. Mm. So, and every single restaurant we stopped at, we we did. It was like a chowder roll. Like we just that's all we ate was wheat and bread and chowder. That's oh all my we pulled off of. And it's so oh funny. It's like every restaurant you go to, it's what's it? The shrimp cocktail? What's it? The Terry uh what's it called? Mary Mary Rose? Yeah, the, the Mary Rolls with the little shrimp on the with the fucking brown bread. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, lovely. Seafood chowder or stew. Mm, so good. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Timer went off. Hey, Gonna check the bread. Hey, Google stock timer. Woo-wee! Look good? Oh man, nothing beats fresh bread. Mm. Okay, you always, 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 you need a resting rack for bread. Okay? What was your trick? You said you I'll had touch, a trick. I'll do the trick. If you just asked about canceling the timer, they're actually wow. going to be a moment. Thank you. So, trick is it's got to be hollow so you can hear that. Mm -hmm. Right? So, there is our soda bread. Okay. So, we're going to let that rest for about five minutes. 10 minutes, just so when we cut it, it's not all falling apart. Bread needs to rest just like meat protein needs to rest. Um, yeah. Okay. So we have our shrimp. Back to washing my hands. Okay. So. Bread's done. Um, base is almost there. So um, with that, we're going to add our fish back in. So I'll bring it up to 10. Uh-oh. <laughs> did you say uh-oh? I did say uh-oh. <laughs> you said it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun of live, live broadcast, right? No, it's not. I'm not eating this chowder tonight. <laughs> I'll eat it. I'm kidding. Okay, so I just put the shrimp in. Again, wash my hands. I mean, how often would you make this, Brian? Like, this is something you have. Yeah, we, we, we make this like once a month or so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, wow. we, uh, we do a lot of cooking at home, and mm -hmm. uh, my wife's really good at, at cooking, and, and I'm okay, I guess. So uh, <laughs> together, we make some fun dishes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the latest thing that you made? What's it called? Sashuka. Sashuka. Sashuka, which is an Egyptian uh, egg dish that has preserved lemon and zatar, mm -hmm. and she killed it. Yeah. where it was, the recipe. She did get the recipe for some, so shout out to Sabrina. Nice. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, she made it on the Friday, and then the following Wednesday, I asked her to make it again because it was that mm. good. Okay, so we got our clams, we have our haddock, it's gonna go into the pot. Okay, so we'll get a fresh cutting board. You have a separate cutting board. I know some people do this. They have a separate cutting board for fish or for meat or for vegetables. Yeah, we do in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. We have the, the whole color-coded system where blue is for fish, yellow is for chicken, uh, red is for meat, uh, brown is for um, bread. Yeah, very, very good. <laughs> and yeah. But here at home, like, I have about six cutting boards, but none of them are color-coded. So mm -hmm. as, long, as, as long as you wash your hands, as long as you clean up after yourself, there's no cross-contamination. So um, I do have some crab that I picked up. So this is Phillips crab. It is absolutely delicious. I love this stuff. I could just eat it out of the can. Super sweet. I think crab is one of my favorite crustacean out there. The king king crab, one hundred percent. I would take that over lobster any day. Mm. So, a little bit of liquid in here. I'm going to drain that out back in my sink here. I'm going to add this crab into the chowder. Perfect. Then I'm going to add my bacon that I pulled out earlier. I'm going to add that back into the chowder, and then we're there. Nice. What time we got? 
Oh, perfect. So, I have some parsley. When I said parsley, I didn't mean that curly stuff. The curly stuff is absolutely horrendous. Mm. Or buy curly parsley. Always buy the flat leaf Italian parsley. It's got much better flavor mm. than um, that nasty curly stuff. So, a handful, just rip it. Stems can be in there. Doesn't really matter. It's all about the rustic um, feel to this chowder. And we want to just give it a nice chiffonade or... Oh, you make it look so easy. I've lost a few fingers. <laughs> Actually, I was up in Oldenburg and we had a film crew come in and they were doing this thing for it was Sociavore. It's an online platform for restaurants. Anyways, they were coming up doing a commercial and they wanted me to be in it. So I said, sure. So they came up, they brought their film crew. Um, I had a brand new knife. So it was a brand new uh, Japanese knife. So they were like, okay, we want you to chop. So they had this like camera on a rolling, uh, like, a, like a roller skate. So they're getting this angle of it coming across, right? So I'm there and they're like, okay, hey, chop. Tipping me finger on the cutting board. And they had it on camera where they slowed it down and showed it to me where the knife just went right. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. So if anybody wants to see that footage, get a hold of me. Um, <laughs> at ignitegroup.ca. Yeah. Now I feel like I shouldn't be talking to you while you're cutting things. <laughs> okay, parsley. Soup's almost done. I'm going to add the parsley in now. Just for a little bit of color, a little bit of flavor. And then I have some chives that I'm going to finish the soup with. Mm. Hey, um, Brian, tell us about the amazing dinners that are coming up at Crowsfoot and uh, oh, really? thank you for touching on that, Sue. So <laughs> we're for the IRL Festival every year. We try and uh, we try and do some features um, at both locations or all three locations. So with Rich, Rich Uncle being closed right now, we're not obviously not doing anything out of there. But with graffiti, we are doing a corned beef and cabbage pizza. Mm. So it's basically our um, famous Detroit style crust. On top of it is some cider and caraway braised cabbage. There's some house-made uh, corned beef, sliced potatoes, and then it has um, a spicy mustard aioli, mm. whiskey fermented mustard seeds, and then watercress with some pickled onions. It's delicious. Wow. Then at Crow's Foot, we are doing a family, um, like a family platter, but it's an Irish smokehouse mm. platter. So we've done corned beef that we've done in house. We got a leg of lamb that we're smoking, and we're doing pull instead of pulled pork. We're going to do mm. pulled lamb. We're also going to throw in some pulled pork. There's some uh, braised cabbage. There's uh, chunky chips. There's baked beans. There's soda bread, and then there's a whiskey, a spicy Jameson barbecue sauce, and then there's a Guinness barbecue sauce. Mm. Feeds a family of four to six. I do believe we're charging 120 bucks. So it feeds a family of four to six, no problem. And then the pizza is like 22 bucks. So oh, yeah, that's they all sound amazing. So that runs from Monday till Sunday next week. And mm -hmm. then if you come online, you go on any of our um, online platforms to order, you'll see a little pop up screen that you can donate to the IRL festival. So you can drop in five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, a thousand bucks, 50,000 bucks, <laughs> a million bucks, a few <laughs> shilling, whatever you got on you, right? right? So please donate away. Mm. Oh, yeah, those sounds good. so good. The what? smoked lamb. Mm. Yeah, smoked lamb. So full leg of lamb. Mm. It's been marinated, rosemary, a whole bunch of other spices. I'm not going to give away our secrets. And then it's put on our um, JNR manufacturing smokers. So smoked overnight, you're looking at about, I think it's about 18 hours and uh, succulent, delicious. Wow. Mm, so good. Wow. Okay, so back. I forgot about the mussels. I'm going to add the mussels in now. <laughs> <laughs> okay so we are golden we've got our bread here so i want to cut into this give a trusty little bread knife 
Um, I'll put these chives in my little container here. This kitchen's a disaster right now. <laughs> it, was so, it was so clean before, but now it's just there's just stuff everywhere. I should have hired a dishwasher for ten years. <laughs> yeah. I should have one of the lads from work to come in and help me out. You know. Yeah. Well, it's a sign of a of a meal well made, right? Right. That's that is so true. Okay, so our soda bread. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, right. Fine. So me, butter. Back to butter. <laughs> I just love soda bread. If it's just got some really, really good butter, and mm. like this grass, grass-fed butter is where it's at. Mm. Smother it on. It's still, it's still warm, so it's just going to melt, mm. melt in there. Then this is where they put the Malden salt. Um, no, what, what is that salt that, that so you're talking? About? Malden salt is from it's from Essex. It's an English salt. It's probably Next to Liverpool is probably the only second thing I like about. Um, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Brian. I'm totally kidding. I got nothing but love for everybody in all around the world. You know, like nothing but love. <laughs> it's just banter, right? So, bar, mold, and salt. So, these are just chunky Ooh. flakes. Like, I don't know if you can see in there. It's. Mm -hmm. mm. That's the best kind of salt, man. Mm. Jesus Christ! I wish I could. I wish you could try this right now. <laughs> I wish I could. It's, it's really, good. it's really good. All right. Okay. So we have a ball. Oh, where's the coop? I was going to use a coop. I think I used it for something else. You did. I did. Okay. So we're going to plate up this chowder, and then that's it. I'm going to leave you guys be. Mm. Yeah, that was pretty quick, really, considering all that goes into it. That's how I like to operate, too, uh, nice and quick, you know? <laughs> Get her done, right? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Jen's my house on here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so chives on top. We got our soda bread. Mm. We have our soup. So we got a little chowder here. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, we'll yeah. Okay, so we got great smoke flavor. We've mm. got all the crab in there. We got the shrimp in there. We got the tatties in there. Our spuds in there. You gotta stop saying tatties, man. <laughs> and we've got the shrimp, the mussels, the clams. We got everything. Mm. Mm. It's really hot. Mm. So good. Isn't it? That's it. So I just want to say thanks for joining me, and I hope you had a blast. I hope I didn't offend you in any way. And um, please, if you want to do it again, let's soon know. Maybe we can turn this into a weekly thing or a monthly thing. Who knows? Yeah. Right? I'm all up for doing it again. I think that was fun. I thought it was fun. Next time, like, obviously, second run, we'll set up the camera properly, and we'll have everything worked out. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. First time for everything. I had a mm -hmm. lot of fun. Uh, yeah. IRL festival all the way, you know. <laughs> and uh, please tune in seven o'clock, Kaylee. Um, that's what we're going to do. We're going right. to eat some food, eat some eat some soda bread, have a few have a few jars, maybe a few drams, and uh, join in. Do some awesome. dancing, listen to some music, yeah. and uh, yeah, much love, love all you guys. Thanks for joining. That's it. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Sir Chef Jen. Gotcha. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thank you, everyone. And we'll definitely do it again. We'll practice some songs as well for next time. Okay. Well, I'll sing those out. Okay. No, I won't. Okay. <laughs> Have a good night. See ya. Bye.